Hi everyone, it's Ivy from Wake Up For Makeup and as we enter into 2015, I thought I would tell you what products really stood out for me in 2014 as well as a few, just a few, that I tried that I was like, what the hell? So if you'd like to see what I was loving and not loving so much in 2014, just keep watching. Okay, so I want to start out with the products that I loved. Those are the funnest to talk about. So I'm going to start by saying that I finally tried the Makeup Geek shadows and fell in love with them. So much that I bought that many. <laughs> they are an extremely affordable, high quality shadow, excellent pigment, excellent blendability. Some of my favorites were the burgundy toned Bitten, the warm reddish brown Cocoa Bear, and the total expensive pink from MAC Dupe um, of Cosmopolitan. That one's a super cool kind of duochrome shadow. So Makeup Geek is something I, I definitely want more of in my life. They just released some new foiled shadows, so probably gonna have to check those out as well in 2015. Okay. In 2014, I got to try out a few airbrush systems. I tried out Boletto, Temp2, and Dynair, and though I use Temp2 on bridal clients and I prefer it for other people, on myself, I was loving Dynair in 2014. For a water-based foundation, this was the easiest to work with. It looked really pretty and it didn't look dry and cakey on somebody like myself that does have dry skin. I really enjoy the Dynair and if you're looking for a system that is just for you and it's not to use on you know, bridal clients or anything like that, I highly recommend the Dynair system. Moving along, I have a brush that I really fell in love with in 2014. This is Sigma's F05 Small Contour Brush and I use it for exactly what it says, contouring. The small domed head is perfect for getting under the cheekbones and what I like to do is to grab my contour powder with one side of it and kind of do that initial chisel and then use the full brush head to buff it out. I just find that this is the ideal shape. It blends really well. It isn't scratchy, it's just right. So if you haven't found a contour brush that you love, I think that you would really enjoy the Sigma F05 as I have. And speaking of contours, um, I found my ultimate contouring powder in 2014 and I have definitely, you know, searched and tried the gamut of contouring powders and matte bronzers that kind of try to say they're for contouring but they're really too warm. So I should have just gone right to the king, Kevin Aquan, but this is his sculpting powder in the shade medium. It looks kind of light on film here, but it looks kind of light on camera, but it really isn't. It's the perfect shadow color. I don't know if you can tell, but I mean it's got that almost gray toned brown that's absolutely perfect for creating realistic contours, especially on the nose area. It's just the ultimate. I kind of resent it for being $44 for one little product when you can get contouring palettes, entire palettes for $40. But I mean, if you want the best, you gotta go to Kevin Aquan. And I did. For a drugstore product, one of the big mascara releases in 2014 was L'Oreal Voluminous Miss Manga. And I totally thought this was going to be a marketing ploy, um, trying to be an anime looking mascara, and I thought it would be just blah or just nothing special. But I really ended up loving this. I like the packaging. I like its springy wand. Ooh. <laughs> um, but it really gave me lashes that were not anime looking at all. That is not what I wanted. I did not want big, thick, uh, fake looking cartoon lashes. It gave me the lashes I really like, which is long and thick, but you know, more feathery and the little spring loaded bendy wand kind of, uh, you know, springs against your lashes as you're brushing upwards. And I find that it really helps to get the appropriate amount of mascara on your lashes. So despite me thinking it was going to be gimmicky initially, Miss Manga was a total hit for me in 2014. And it is another one of the L'Oreal mascaras that I think I will continue to buy again and again. Okay, I tried a few primers in 2014 and I have two that really stood out. The first is Stila's One Step Correct. This is another product that I thought it looks gimmicky with this, you know, kind of helix, chambers in here, it looks like a DNA 
uh, model, it's got three different color correcting liquids. So there's a lavender to color correct sallowness or yellow, um, a pink to kind of brighten up your skin, and then a green to counteract redness. So what I found is that it actually does color correct effectively. Somehow these colors do come out appropriately and mix together and they totally tone down redness better than a lot of the anti-redness primers that I've used in the past. So I use this a lot on clients that do have, you know, a little bit of rosacea or just a little too much rosiness in the cheeks or forehead area and it cancels out that redness without looking chalky or leaving like a greenish cast and it's really lightweight. I would describe the texture as kind of like whipped or kind of like a mousse or souffle. So I love the texture, love the color correcting. If you're looking for something that does double duty and that it color corrects and it does give your makeup a little something to grip onto, Stila One Step Correct really does do that. Another primer that I really ended up liking in 2014 is from Dermalogica, which is a skincare brand. This is their Skin Perfect Primer from their Age Smart line. So this does have you know, some peptides and some ingredients that are gonna help with anti-aging, but it does have SPF 30, which I found extremely impressive for a primer. So if you use a daily moisturizer that doesn't already contain SPF, you can rest easy knowing that your primer is at least gonna take care of that for you. This promises a velvety type finish and it truly does give that. When I wore this, um, I kind of forgot that I was trying out a new primer and later on in the day I thought, gosh, why does my skin look better than it usually would at this time of day? And then I remembered I was trying this primer. So I've worn it several times since that day and it really is the primer that's giving me that velvety look, really minimizing pores right here where I tend to have a lot bigger pores than most. Um, the only thing I don't love about this, well, there's two things that I don't love about it. One, it is $48, and I think that's a lot for a primer. I'm not going to pretend that it isn't. Two, um, it's got kind of a strange medicinal scent when you first apply it, almost similar to like Vicks Vapor Rub, but it does, you know, wear off. You don't smell it on your skin during the day, so I think it's well worth it for the SPF and that really nice velvety look that it gives your skin under foundation. So I do get sent a lot of products, and in 2014 I got to try out a lot of brands that were new to me, and one of those brands was Billion Dollar Brows. I had the opportunity to try their Universal Brow Pencil, and it quickly became one of my favorite brow products because it's so fast and easy to use. I've been using it ever since they sent it to me. This is a really nice, soft, retractable pencil. You don't need to sharpen it and it has a slightly waxy feel, which I liked because it held my brows into place and it was soft. So although I really do like the Brow Wiz pencil from Anastasia, it's a little bit sharp. Sometimes it almost hurts. Um, this has a spoolie at the end too, to brush the color through and brush your brows up. And despite my initial skepticism of it being universal, it really is. I have dark brown hair and I do like bold brows. So I wasn't sure if it could give me a bold enough look, but it definitely does and I just, I really love it and I'm a new Billion Dollar Brows fan from here on out. Another brand that I got to try out in 2014 that was new to me is Ingla. I tried their eyeliner gel in the color 89, which is a really unique, almost taupey plum color. It's totally unlike any other color I've seen in a gel liner and it goes on smoother than any gel liner I've ever used. It does not appear to be drying out whatsoever. It takes the tiniest, tiniest amount, and it's just the easiest to work with gel liner that I've used. I can't wait to get the black color and lots of others. They have some really cool metallics, and I'm going to totally stock up on them. So yes, Inglot Eyeliner Gel is amazing. Plus, I did try two of their shadows as well and loved them just as much. So I got 375, which is just a really pretty, you know, traditional purple. It's matte. This is matte as well, 361. It is a peachy shade that you can use as a blush and it's just as pretty on cheeks as it is on your eyes. I love both of these. I don't know that I've loved any other shadow formula as much as Lorox, but this is probably second place. It's beautiful pigmentation, great blendability, no powdery um, excess fallout. They're just really great quality shadows and as with the the gel eyeliner i can't wait to stock up on many 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 more colors of the ingla eyeshadows
And these are the products that they just did not work for me. By no means do I hate these or do I want to say that, you know, the company did a terrible job. That's not what I'm here to say. Um, they just did not work like I hoped they would. I had high expectations and then they just kind of fell short. So here are the products that I cannot say that I loved in 2014 and why. So the first product or set of products that I just did not love is a skincare line from a brand called Tula. And I'm really sad that these items did not work out for me because they sent it in such a pretty package. The packaging of the products themselves is really nice. It's like frosted glass jars, so it's very quality packaging. I was really, really anxious to try these out because I, you know, really do prioritize skincare and I'm always looking for new products that I feel um, are going to help to prevent aging. So my main gripe with all of their products is not that the formulas are bad and it's not that they don't do what they say because for example this hydrating night and day, day and night cream, it does hydrate really well and it's a really thick formula which I thought I would love. The problem is that all of their products have a scent that is very, very similar to Elizabeth Taylor's White Diamonds which in my opinion is one of the stinkiest perfumes ever made. I'm really sorry if like your your grandma or your mom wears that fragrance, but for me, like I can't smell it without getting kind of like vomit in my throat. Again, I'm really sorry. I don't mean to offend anyone here. It's just not for me at all. And a lot of that could be because when I worked at Sephora, you know, there would be um, certain repeat clientele that would come through and spritz on their white diamonds on the daily and it kind of might have a bad taste in my mouth literally because of that so i really wanted to love this illuminating face serum it even has you know a little bit of a glow when you put it on so i love anything that's glowy and dewy but it smells like white diamonds really really strongly and i don't know what you know what flower i might be picking up that's that's in this it's just so off-putting to me that I literally can't use their products. I I'd question why companies feel the need to over fragrance things when so many people are either sensitive to that or fragrance is just so personal. It's so hard to make a scent that everyone would like when I'm telling you how much I hate white diamonds and there are women out there that love it and have worn it for decades. So I just wish companies would stop putting fragrance in things. Um, the only product that doesn't seem to be as heavily scented that I can, you know, withstand is the eye cream. I smell a slight hint of it in there, but it's not so much that I can't use it. So I'm going to use the eye cream from Tula, but the rest of their products I can't use without gagging and I'm really sorry about it because I wanted to love them. All right, I have two more products that I did not have happy experiences with as much as I wanted to like them. They both happen to be from Maybelline and that is a total coincidence. So I tried late in the year one of their new mascara releases which is Lash Sensational. Um, I think we can drop the word sensational from the name because it didn't do anything sensational for me. This formula is simply far too wet to work with and it has a dual sided brush that I thought would be effective because there's shorter bristles on one side, longer on the other. It's supposed to give you really fanned out lashes. They had me at fanned out. I love that pretty feathery style. It simply deposited way too much product. It clumped really bad. It made all my lashes stick together and I've tried to work with it several times thinking maybe it just needs to kind of dry out and I can't say too many good things about this mascara. I know a lot of people liked it, so this is total personal preference here, but I borderline hated this mascara and I can't even use it on my bottom lashes or find any good use for this. So Lash Sensational, you are not sensational for me. Last product that I tried out that I really wanted to love and did not end up loving is Maybelline's Baby Skin. This is their Instant Pore Eraser Primer. I had heard a little bit of talk that this was supposed to be their drugstore counterpart to Benefits the Professional. So I was expecting, you know, a thicker consistency, you know, kind of flush toned primer the way Professional is, and it's not. It is just a 
clear silicone based primer that's got that slippery feeling. Now I love that. I like silicone based primers so that was not my issue. However, being somebody with dry skin, I applied this and even I felt that it had a greasy feel to it. So if you have normal to oily skin, you would probably hate this if even I felt like it was, you know, kind of greasy and oily feeling. And also I just didn't feel like it did anything that any other drugstore primer couldn't do. In fact, I actually like ELF's Mineral Primer a lot better than this, and I think it's probably the same price, perhaps cheaper. So this just simply was not impressive to me at all, and I have read some reviews that even say that it caused breakouts. It feels like it would. It's pretty icky feeling. So sorry, baby skin. You just did not give me anything but greasy baby skin. <laughs> So hey, thank you so much for listening to all of that and hopefully the things that I loved end up becoming things that you love too or at least you enjoy trying and I hope that I could maybe save you some heartache with the items that I did not love. However, if you liked some of the things that I talked about and said that I hated them or like they made me want to vomit, tell me down below because you know it gives me faith knowing that it's not a bad product, it's just personal preference. So these are just the items that didn't work for me or the items that I totally loved, but that doesn't mean that you won't have a different experience or that someone you know might not totally love the Chula skincare line or maybe they will absolutely hate the Miss Manga mascara. Thank you guys so much for watching. I look forward to making more videos for you in 2015. More videos, better videos, mo better videos. So stay tuned for that and in the meantime, please visit at wakeupformakeup.com. Bye.